just wanted to share some of the frameworks of happiness that I thought were most interesting from the research that I read. First uh, framework is happiness is really just about four things. Perceived control, perceived progress, connectedness, meaning the number and depth of your relationships, and being part of something bigger than yourself. And what's interesting is you can apply this to business as well. You know, connectedness goes back to company culture. And I'll give a quick example for uh, perceived progress. We used to hire people in our merchandising department at entry level and then give them promotions every 18 months. And, you know, they get trained and certified and so on. And then in three years, they become a buyer. Well, we changed that a few years ago so that instead of a promotion every 18 months, we gave them smaller promotions every six months. Nothing changed. They still took three years to become a buyer. They still had to go get certified and so on. But we found employees were much happier because there was that ongoing sense of perceived progress. And it cost the company nothing to do that. Uh, Maslow's Hierarchy, there's a book called Peak by Chip Conley, P-E-A-K, where he condenses it down to three levels. And so, for example, for employees, it's do they think of their work as a job or career or calling? And our whole goal at Zappos is to move them up that pyramid so that they're still employees at Zappos 10 years from now. And then the last framework I wanted to share real quickly are the three types of uh, happiness, pleasure, engagement, and meaning. And the first type I like to call the rock star type of happiness because it's all about chasing that next high. And it's great if you can sustain it. The problem is it's very hard to sustain unless you're basically a rock star. And what the research has shown is that as soon as the source of stimuli goes away, that's giving you that high, uh, as soon as that goes away, your happiness just plummets and drops right back down to wherever it was before. It's the shortest last, lasting type of happiness. The second is called flow, and it's about, uh, we've all experienced this, it's about those moments when time just flies because you're so into whatever you're doing. For some people, it's running. For other people, it might be painting. And it's three hours past. seems like only 20 minutes have passed. And professional athletes refer to it as being in the zone where peak engagement meets peak performance. And other characteristics associated with it are you lose a sense of self-consciousness self -consciousness or even self. And basically, uh, the strategy there is notice when it happens and then change your environment, your friends, where you live, your job, and so on, to have it happen more often. And the research shows that that's the second longest lasting type of happiness. And the third type is the longest lasting type. It's about being part of something bigger than yourself. And for some people, it might be volunteering for your favorite charity, for example. And what I found interesting is most people go through life chasing after the first type of happiness, thinking once I can sustain that on an ongoing basis, which is next to impossible, then I'll worry about the second type. And then if I ever get around to it, then I'll worry about the third type. When, based on the research data, and purely on the research data, the proper strategy is figure out the third type first, layer on top of that the second type, and then anytime you experience the first type, it's just icing on the cake.